Um, as discussed last week, we will continue to expand on the topic of namaz today. I do have two new guests on the show. I'm really excited to announce them. Uh, first of all, I would like to introduce Jabal Rehan. Assalamu alaikum. How are you doing? Wa alaikum salam. I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm great. I'm great. Jabal, would you like to tell our audience something about yourself? Um, I'm in the 11th grade, studying at Rick Hansen Secondary in Mississauga, Ontario. We're really happy to have you here, and we, I look forward to having a discussion with you today. Yeah. Our second guest for today is Muhammad Samir. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. How are you today? I'm doing good. Samir, would you like to tell us something about yourself, Muhammad? Uh, yes, I'm in grade 11 and I'm studying at St. Augustine. Nice to meet you. I'm looking forward to having a discussion with you today. So, um, we wanted to expand more on the topic of namaz as discussed last week. So, I did bring in new uh, youth guests today here so that they can bring in a fresh perspective to the topic and ask about questions that they might have. So I want to start off with um, Rehan first about how you pray at school and if you have any questions regarding namaz, things that you might encounter uh, that you face or troubles that you face when you pray during a school or even at home. Okay. Now in my school, there are actually a good handful of Muslims and the Muslim population is quite wide. Now. Our school has a group called MSA, which is a Muslim Association Club or something. And then in that club, we organize events such as Jummah, mm -hmm. which is um, usually we pray in the cafeteria. There's Jummah as well. So our school actually accommodates for Muslims, which is uh, which I think is actually very good. Now, regarding namaz, one question I have is um, knowing that it is described in the Quran in multiple places that, yes, five mm -hmm. times a day we have to read, like Fajr, Zohar, Asr, Maghrib, Isha. But are there any like rules or exceptions regarding that? Okay, makes sense. So I guess just to elaborate on your question, you're trying to ask if there if you're required to pay the whole uh, right. prayer five times a day because yeah. obviously we set out a certain number of rakats that we have to perform during the day, uh, during night, and throughout all our namaz. So yeah. I guess your question is more specifically about whether you have any leeway when it comes to praying the entire namaz, or can you? Pray shorter namazes like right. sometimes we do, right? Exactly. Um, so I guess the perfect person to ask that question is our guest today. Um, we do have Alama Bilal Sadiq Saab from Houston today. Um, he will expand more on your answer and tell us more about this topic. Okay. Assalamu alaikum, Alama Saab. Assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. How are you doing today? Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen ala kulli hal. How are you all, brothers? Mashallah. I'm doing great as well. Thank you so much for being here today and sharing your knowledge with us. We look forward to having this discussion with you. Um, we do have two brand new guests with us today here, uh, Muhammad and Javad. Javad did have a question directed towards you. Um, if you could please elaborate on the topic for us. Yes, Mashallah. Uh, the brother has asked that um, where do we exactly see the five, number five, or how five times prayer, um, how are they proved? Um, so there is a hadith in Sahih Bukhari. It is actually the first hadith of Kitab al-Salah. Um, and the story is really famous that Nabi Kareem sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam was called um, towards the Mi'raj um, when we know that Huzur sallallahu alayhi wasallam got to see Allah azza wa jal, got to, um, you know, have uh, kalam with him and in on the miraj night um, this was a gift for the ummat that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, got um, and the the story goes like as you you must have heard before that allah azza wa jal he gave 50 raka, 50 uh, time namazes in the beginning and then when rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, he went uh, back and he met Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. So the Musa alayhi salam when, uh, told Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam that your ummah is not going to be able to fulfill this this obligation of 50 raka, 50 time namaz. So go back. Uh, Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi salam went back and then five were deducted. Okay, this kept on going on. Five were deducted. Now 45 were left. Then Huzur sallallahu alayhi salam came back and then Hazrat Musa alayhi salam told him that uh, your ummah will not be able to do 45 either. So go back. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam requested Allah to reduce them. So they became 40. And this kept on going on until there were only five left. Okay, and the words of Bukhari at the end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that, wa 
that though these namazes are five now, five namazes, but they're going to be equal to 50. Um, because Allah Azzawajal said that my words don't change. Since Allah had obligated 50 rakat, uh, 50 time namazes, and after reduction, after this, uh, you know, this uh, lightness, right, uh, on the obligation for the ummat, um, since they were reduced, but still, the first thing was 50, so the sawab we get is going to be a 50. So this is where we get um, basically the idea that the salat namazes that were made first were obligated are five. Also in the Quran, we see many, many proofs regarding this. For example, in Surah Hud, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, salata tarafa yin nahari, that uh, establish the prayer on the two ends of the day. Okay, two ends, you know, the day. We have two two ends, right? One is the sunrise. Okay, one is the sunset. Wazula uh, from minal layli, and on the early part in the night. Okay, so see, we see three, three at least three namazes in this ayat. I'll go uh, more and I'll tell you more ayats. But in this ayat of Surah Hud, we see three uh, time namazes. One which is at the end of the two uh, two points of the day. Okay, the namaz when we, which we pray in the morning after dawn. Okay, and then the namaz which we pray after sunset. Okay, Fajr and Maghrib basically. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also said, Wazula from minal layli, uh, pray at the night time. So Fajr, Maghrib and uh, Isha namaz we see from Surah Hud. And then in Surah Bani Israel, Allah Azza wa says, Aqim salata li duluk shams. That pray salah when the sun starts to decline. That is the Zohar namaz. If you see that uh, sun uh, first, you know, it rises and then it goes to the uh, the center point and then it starts to decline. Um, and Allah Azza wa Jal says, once it starts declining, then pray Zohar namaz. And then um, in Surah Qaf, we see Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ قَبْلَ طُلُوعِ الشَّمْسِ وَقَبْلَ الْغُرُوبِ That praise your Lord, uh, glorify your Lord with the praises. قَبْلَ طُلُوعِ الشَّمْسِ before the rising of the sun and before the setting of the sun and you know before rising is Fajr namaz as we have already talked about this before sunset okay so this tells us that there is a namaz before sunset as well okay so these are a few the few ayahs that um, I have shared with you uh, which give us an idea that you know th these namaz this, these are the times of namazes this is when we will pray okay and then um, or if you want to go into more details, I will just uh, tell you a brief. I want to just expand on that topic and actually talk about the concepts of shorter namaz. Because to be very honest with you, a lot of youth that I see within us, they tend to not pray the full namaz anymore, right? For example, when they go for Asr, they'll pray only Char Faris rather than praying both Char Sunnah and the Char Faris, right? Um, what does Islam tell us about that? Are there any of these Quranic verses related to that? Um, when are we allowed to do that? Um, is it permissible to do it just because we don't feel like praying the full namaz? Um, first, uh, the thing is that we need to be sure what is the importance of namaz, what is the significance of namaz. Okay, Our, we see in the hadiths that Huzur wasallam has said that the difference between uh, Islam and non-Islam is the namaz. Okay, basically, namaz is something that, you know, solidifies your iman, your faith. Okay, that does not mean, obviously, that someone who is skipping salah becomes a kafir right away. That's not what we're saying. But we're saying that if someone is praying namaz, if he's firm on the namaz, right, he, this is his, uh, the, his deen becomes solid. He becomes like a, a strong Muslim. Okay, the people who are not praying, obviously, that is a gunahe kabira. That is a major sin. Uh, if you skip the farais and the uh, the, the wajibat as well, uh, abundantly in regular uh, terms, that becomes a major sin. Um, but this uh, this is something that you know is going to uh, cause problems uh, in your deen. You know, people who kind of uh, don't have this uh, uh, behavior, this habit of praying namaz, they're always you can see they're always in doubt. They always have questions. Um, and you know this thing as well. So about regarding the sunnats that you asked, um, there is a first we need to learn. First we understood the significance of namaz. Secondly, understand the significance of sunnat. Huzur sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the hadith he says, uh, uh, "Man raghiba an sunnati, falaisa minni." That whoever deviates away, whoever is not inclined towards my sunnat, he is not from me. Okay, Nabi Akram sallallahu alaihi wasallam such strong words. 
Okay. Um, also, you will see in the hadith is that Huzur Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said that whoever has loved my sunnah has loved me, and whoever has loved me, he will be with me uh, uh, on the day of judgment. Or in Jannah, he will be with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So these are the narrations, these are the mafhum, these are the uh, hadiths that we have seen regarding sunnah. Now, we have to understand there are two types of sunnahs. One type of sunnah is sunnah muakkada, and the other type of sunnah is sunnah ghaira muakkada. Sunnah muakkada, muakkad, muakkada, muakkad. This means emphasized. Okay, something that is emphasized in Arabic, they call it muakkad. Okay, so sunnah muakkada means a sunnah which was emphasized. Okay, um, in terms of uh, the rakat or any other um, blessed act of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. If you go look at Sunnah Muqqadah, you will see that these are the acts that Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam never left in his life. Um, so there are two types of uh, Sunnahs uh, Rakat, right? One are Muqqadah Rakats, one are Ghair Muqqadah Rakats. Muqqadah Rakats, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam always prayed them. Okay, Ghair Muqqadah, just to tell that you have an option, he uh, sometimes left it to show us that, okay, you can, it's optional, you can leave it. Um, so... Um, we see hadiths regarding this as well, that there's a hadith in Sahih Bukhari that Sayyidah Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha narrates that the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam never left four rakat before Zuhr prayer and two rakats before the Fajr prayer. Okay, the, the rakats before Zuhr, rakats before uh, Fajr, the two rakats before Fajr that we pray and the yeah. four rakats before uh, Zuhr that we pray. Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wasallam never left these. Um, you also see that in Abu Dawood, Hazrat Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma narrated that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam always prayed two rakats after Zohar namaz, two rakats after Maghrib namaz, and then two rakats after Isha namaz. Okay, so these are the uh, the sunnah and muakkadah rakats. The two before Zoh uh, Fajr, the four before Zohar, two after Zohar, uh, two after Maghrib, and two after Isha. Okay, these are the rakats that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never left. He always prayed them. So it is a uh, you know an emphasized sun emphasized sunnat. So just to add, do you have any further questions? By the way, like does that help you answer the question? Do you have a follow up question, Jawad? Uh, no, Jazakallah, that was actually very clear. Now I fully understand now why. Um, what are the difference between a layer and and So it's actually very clear to me now. Fair enough. So Muhammad, what about you? Do you have any follow up questions for uh, Alama Sab? Yes, I have one question. So I've seen people uh, on Fridays, they just read the first namaz and leave. Is that okay or should we like always read the full namaz? Okay, so just to elaborate on the topic, I guess um, we, and this is something I've seen as well, like, and honestly, I've done that too. Like pray to rakat namaz, read it for uh, the khutbah and just left, left the masjid after that. Right. Um, not until someone told me actually it was my dad who elaborated on, on the fact that mm -hmm. I still have to pray the Zohar Namaz mm -hmm. till I didn't even know that that was a thing. So I've seen that this has been a confusion uh, amongst a lot of youth today that when we come for Jummah, we only pray the two rakats for Fars and then we don't actually pray the Zohar Namaz that we're supposed to pray as well. So would you like to elaborate on that, Alama Sab? Is that something that's allowed? What should we do regarding that? Um, I will try to give you a logical example, a logical answer, uh, because I have felt that uh, people prefer logical answers more than, you know, uh, the texts, because logic is, you know, something that we, we all can agree on. Uh, so think about it. Once we, uh, you know, try to build a house, um, we don't just make the basis of it, right? Because if, think about it, if you want to buy a land, okay, and then you just, uh, the city gives you boundaries, okay, this is your land, this is your uh area you can live here okay you can just uh you know put some chadar on the floor and start living right that's that's what's required or you can just like you know make up a tent and live on that space right but we don't do that first we buy a land then you know we build uh on it we have walls as well we have a ceiling as well we have roofs as well we have fences as well we have a security system as well we have windows as well uh, so that we can see out uh, the outer things and we have doors we have all of these facilities Okay, the point yeah. is that what was the minimum to make a house, right? The minimum was that you can just make that boundary and then start living in there and that's your house. But when we go to make a house, we make walls as well. We make windows, we make doors, we have a security system so that, you know, we safeguard ourselves, our wealth, our families um, from, you know, these bad people, these uh, thieves or any other uh, robbers, all these things. So that, that is exactly the example of faraiz versus sunnats. 
that once you uh, farais are the minimum part minimum units of namaz that is something that you have to do anyways uh, that is something that you know we we are obligated to do okay but the example of someone who just prays farais is just like someone who does the bare minimum okay someone who just makes you know just buys the land and then just you know puts chadar on it on it and sleeps and his wealth is over there his family is over there okay nobody's going to call him an intelligent person because he's not safe not safe from the weather not safe from the robbers not safe from you know the dangers that might be out there uh, an, an intelligent person is who builds the walls builds the ceiling you know makes windows makes doors puts a security system that is a sane person that is an intelligent person why because he has safeguarded himself and his family his wealth from all the dangers so that is the role that sunnats and nawafil they play in our lives that look shaitan is the biggest enemy that uh, for a muslim right he's always trying to you know attack give you waswasas give you whispers try to deviate you from the right path okay if we want to be safeguarded from the shaitan we need to you know build our houses uh, we need to put a proper security system and what is that that is something that you will, will be attained by praying the sunnats praying the nawafil and you know making sure that you know we're praying the namazes properly if you just uh, you know suffice on farais then as i said that is just like as if you're doing the bare minimum okay in the world in the dunya this is just one example of the of the house that i gave you can you know make it general uh when you go out buy a car you don't just you know you can buy a bicycle that's going to get you from point a to point b but you know what do we look at we look okay you should have an interior system you should have a proper heater leather seats this and that right why 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 do we not say okay you know a bicycle is going to be really cheap is going to save me money let's just buy a bicycle and let's go to work like this let's go to school like this why are we only uh, you know focused on more and more and more more luxury more better uh yeah, in terms of basically like having a house without any foundations to sit on basically right yes yes so when we look at uh, the duniyavi things the worldly things that when we want to buy a house we look at the best house when we want to buy a car we want we look at the best car when we go to school we check every single thing that okay are the teachers good is the zone good are the students good how is the report everything we check okay why because you know we we don't want to suffice on the bare minimum in our world then why do we have this mindset regarding the akhirat because as i said the namaz is such an important part of the deen uh, that we cannot emphasize on this enough so you know the sunnahs and uh, the nawafil all the extra rakats uh, they play a role which are going to safeguard you from all the dangers uh, in the world as well in the hereafter as well yeah that's a very unique way of looking at the actual topic because honestly like we only have a limited amount of time in this world but we have an eternity when we pass away from this world right so are we doing enough to make sure that we will enter jannah once we do die because at the end of the day the first question is always about namaz right and that's the first question that will be popped and how do you even get to question number 2 when you can't even ask the question number 1 right so i love the way you explained it it's very relatable especially to youth and like today's world because we look at material objects and we think about what our life is going to look like for the next 10 20 years versus what our life will be once we die right and that's that scares me like allah so i also want to talk about one last question which is a personal question of mine is uh the timing for namaz itself right is it how important is it to adhere to the timing of namaz making sure that you pray um maghrib before it's completely dark can i just uh like because honestly sometimes i'm so busy at work i really don't get the time to actually take time out to go pray for uh, zuhur because i'm in a meeting i wouldn't be allowed to like leave my meeting so is it possible for me to maybe uh delay like obviously the option of would like the option right so what does islam tell us about that can i delay my prayers like what if i'm in a situation where i can't pray um allah azza wa jalla has said in the quran in surah nisa inna salata kanat ala al mu'minin kitaban mawquta that indeed the salat the namaz upon the mu'minin is a uh, is a farz which is mawqut which is timed which is restricted with time uh it is an obligation which is specific to time um for example you will see that there are some ahkam of the uh, of, of the sharia of islam that are not really bounded by the time uh some are uh bounded by the time like for example umrah if you want to do umrah you can do it any time you want um for example zakat you can pay throughout the year okay these things are not limited to the time but salat is something namaz is something that 
you have an, a starting point and you have an ending point. Okay, and this is uh, basically more described in a really nice way. Again, in the famous hadith in uh, Jamit Tirmizi, uh, this hadith is uh, famously known as hadith e imam at jibril in which after the Miraj, Hazrat Jibreel alayhi salam came to the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam and showed him the times of the prayers. I will just tell you briefly what happens that Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wasallam says that Jibreel did my imamat, he showed me how to pray namaz uh, in the Holy Kaaba for two days. Two, two days he showed. So on the first day he showed the starting points and on the second day he showed the ending points of the namaz. So he says the first we prayed the Zuhur Salat once the sun started to decline. So we find out that this is the starting time of Zohar. Then he says the Asr namaz when the shadow was long. Okay. And then we prayed the Maghrib namaz after sunset. Isha namaz when all the twilights had gone. Okay. And then the Fajr namaz right after dawn. Okay. So these are the starting points of namaz. Then Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says next day what happened was that we prayed Zohar namaz when the shadow was long. Okay. Remember that was the starting of Asr time. Okay. So basically uh, the ending of Zohar time is right before the uh, right uh, right before when asr time starts yeah, exactly. okay so when the Zohar, uh, shadow was long we prayed zohar then we prayed asr namaz when the shadow got longer meaning uh you know uh, sometime before maghrib namaz and then we prayed maghrib after sunset and we prayed isha uh, when one third of the night had passed okay and we prayed fajr when there was a lot of light meaning that we prayed fajr and then the sun had risen after a few minutes so we we saw that this hadith tells us that two uh, the starting point of the namaz and the ending point of the namaz. Uh, then the Hazrat Jibreel uh, alayhi salam, he said to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam, that this is the time observed by prophets before you. This is the, the statement that Hazrat Jibreel alayhi salam said to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam. So from the Quran, I, uh, we presented an ayat that namaz is timed. It's a timed worship. Okay, it's not like, you know, you have a free choice that, okay, I can pray all five namazes in the morning uh, before work, or I can pray all five namazes at night before I'm sleeping. Okay, and, um, you know, uh, this this thing is uh, uh, something that we have to care about, that namaz is supposed to be prayed in the time. If you pray before the time, the namaz will not even count. And if you pray after the time, you will get qaza. Uh, and qaza is uh, extremely sinful. It's an extremely sinful deed. Um, there are many, many uh, wa'id, there are many, many warnings for the people who are uh, making their namaz qaza. Okay, uh, we don't have time to go over each and everything, but um, I'm sure that people know, uh, you have heard this in your Sunday school in Juma Bayans and everything, that there are many, many uh, warnings for the people who are uh, making their namaz qaza. So qaza is not an option for us. We have to pray during, uh, on the time, okay, when the namaz is first. You know the starting and ending time. Uh, this is, these are the times for you to pray. Okay, um, yes, if you have some, you know, um, some important thing, you, there's something you're stuck somewhere, you cannot get out. So yeah, you, you have, you know the times, uh, and usually we have prayer calendars, we have so many apps, so we know the ending times of the namazes, so we can, uh, you know, figure out our schedule, and as long as we're praying within the time, the namaz will count. Thank you so much, Alama Saab, that really helps us a lot. Um, do you guys have any follow-up questions, Jawad or Muhammad? Uh, no. Uh, no, everything is actually very clear. Jazakallah for making everything a lot more clear than that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Alama Saab. We really appreciate you taking out the time of being with us here today and sharing your knowledge. Uh, like always, you've expanded our knowledge and made it more relatable to us so that we understand it better. I do look forward to speaking to you again. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us here today for our show. Um, it was a pleasure expanding on the topic. I would like to thank again Jawad here for being here today, Muhammad as well. Um, your questions did bring a lot of like concerns to the light, um, and I hope the answers that we got helped to bring things more clear, make things more clear, not just for you guys, but also people who are watching here today. Um, I would like to thank every, each and everyone who takes out the time to watch our show, learn about Islam and the problems that we as youth face on a daily basis. I do look forward to seeing you again next week. Make sure you drop a like on Meme TV and make sure you follow us on Facebook as well. Uh, Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.